address one other point is that uh, we are, you know, in the last few years we've been looking at uh, a lot of uh, uh, cooking shows. Now, you know, when you go to a restaurant, you get the, the final product. And once upon a time, uh, Parliament uh, sort of worked in its own way and they gave out the, uh, uh, the bit that they wanted to to the public. But yes. now, uh, the expectation is that people not only want to have the recipe of how governance and government works, but they also want to participate along the way on how you get there. Now, you know that once you are in the kitchen, the best thing to do is to send all people who want to look at your, how you cook your, your meat or vegetable, etc., away and say, listen, wait in the restaurant. When I'm finished, I'll tell you. And if the product is good, then you come back to my restaurant. Otherwise, no. And I think that's what Tony Abbott is doing. Well, I think it's, it's, it's along those lines that... Uh, this business of, for example, in, in, in a business, things do really work quite slowly. And progress is not, cannot be measured on a day-to-day. -day. Mm. But if you walked into my place now, you know there is a bit of change here. Mm. Now, if you were to judge me on today's look, yes. it was different from last year's look when everything was in place. And that's because things are moving. Yes. You don't know what I'm doing, but they are moving. But I don't appear too good whilst I'm doing it. So you have to wait until this cycle finishes, and then I'll invite you back again. But I made a mistake today because I invited you into a place that's it's in, a work, a work in, in the progress. middle of things. It's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a very interesting point, Tom, because I think on the one hand, people want to be involved in decision making and they're entitled to be involved in, in decision making. But on the other hand, if you're providing progress reports every day or expected to announce something every day and the pressure is on Prime Ministers and, and Premiers and Opposition Leaders to give the media something new every day, what happens is that you get all these things that get announced but the follow-up, the implementation, often is deficient and is lacking. So frankly, uh, leaders have to be able to say to the media, I'm not going to announce something new every day. What I'm going to do is I'm going to announce something and then I'm going to spend time working with the people who I need to work with in order to implement this thing successfully. And if this means I don't have something new to say to you for the rest of the week, well, that's too bad because it's better that we have good decisions rather than a multiplicity of decisions and decision making and announcing well, every one day. Well, one of the, uh, some politicians in Australian, Australian history said once upon a time uh, is, that, um, <laughs> is that in politics you give the media mm. what you want to give them. Uh, I think we have to somehow understand how the media works and where it's at and the media has to have its act together because rather than always ask the same question over and over again, we have so many different areas of life that the media can look after. For example, we don't get enough in newspapers and commentary about science and education, about uh, the details of the, the things that are actually working. Uh, so the media, in a way, needs to actually do an inversion as well to go back and stop badgering the politicians on a daily basis and actually concentrate on looking at what society actually does in education, in defence, in this and that, and saying these are the things that, that work in practice. This how they work yes. in practice. I, I think uh, what is key here is that uh, if leaders are not talking to the media every day and monopolising the airwaves, this will create space both for them to go and do their jobs better, but also for other voices to be heard. So if, if you're the science minister or the housing minister or uh, involved in uh, defence forces and so on, there are more opportunities for you then to talk about your issues or indeed for ordinary members of parliament, backbenchers, to say, I have a view about superannuation or I have a view about foreign ownership or whatever it is, and we can have debates about other things and indeed more room for voices that uh, you don't hear from so much in the public debate 
like scientists, like academics, like non-government organisations who have views that are well worth hearing also. And that is something that I, as of Italian background and person who speaks Italian fluently and uh, has an eye on Italy, for the last 20 years, Italy, uh, they speak about 80% of the, the airwaves have been dominated by Berlusconi. Mm. Now, people are tired of that sort of uh, yes. focus. So what you need to do here, and we're in agreement about this, is to actually put more responsibility on the media to change its ways. Because if you came to interview me, mm. uh, I can't say no as a mm. politician. Mm. Mm. You can't really say no. I've asked you, you, you can say no, but if, if an important media outlet rings you or... Yes. Uh, they say, <laughs> well, you know, you can't say no because you're looking for votes all the time. So it's a question of the media ignoring the policy. They're doing that today because today we have grand final yes. day. Therefore, the, the media and everything else is full of what's going on at the MCG. Well, it's a fair point, uh, Tom, but I also think that the leaders themselves have got to pull back and realise that it's not in their own best interests to go out to the media every day and seek to dominate and monopolise the airwaves. I think that uh, ultimately, as we've seen with leadership issues in recent years, it, f it, it frankly uh, increases the churn rate and... and uh, brings closer your use-by date. So I think that uh, leaders would be well advised to pull back a bit and to create room and space uh, for other voices. I know that media like going to the top. It give, if they have regular access to leaders, it uh, gives them power and, and uh, media outlets will feel that uh, they are involved in setting the political agenda. And, it makes and the journalists it, and involved, it they get kudos and, and out and of make, that. They become them, actually more important it, than the people who govern it, because they then manipulate the information. They, they ask the questions and they mm. decide what's the issue of the day and what they want to hear from the Prime Minister about. So, so you certainly have that at work, but I think that uh, if leaders pull back and allow other voices to be heard, that will improve the quality of the democracy and, and be more democratic, and it will also be helpful for those leaders and we'll, we'll stop seeing them uh, burn out after a couple of years. I think we've exhausted uh, this particular segment too and uh, our discussion about the um, you know, relationship between politics and the media. Uh, come back to us for another segment. We'll change the theme a little bit.